Welcome to Sunshine Cathedral's Queer God Squad. It's Tuesday, October the 1st, 2024. I'm Reverend Dr. Darrell Watkins, the senior minister here at Sunshine Cathedral. I am Reverend Dr. Robert Griffin, the executive minister. Faith and religion can be complicated for the LGBTQ community. Surveys show that evangelical faith is the justification for the greatest attacks on the queer community. The Queer God Squad has gone to explore our religious community. Let's explore the big news of the day and what it means to you. I am Reverend Dr. Ann Atwell, the Minister of Connections. This is live and then we are available on demand. If our community is important to you, share this news with your friends and family. Join the conversation on your favorite streaming platform and social media. At Sunshine Cathedral, we're here to tell you that you are God's miracle, not God's mistake. This is the Sunshine Cathedral Perspective. The Prophetic Sexual Outlaw, Ibrahim Farajaje. Ibrahim Abdurman Farajaje, lovingly called Ibrahim Baba and formerly known as Elias Farajaje Jones, was a theologian, seminary professor, provost, and so much more. The advocate once called him a prophetic sexual outlaw. I heard him speak in person a couple of times. He was super tall, uh, tatted, uh, pierced, and leather wearing. He, in those days, identified as bisexual, but would later say even that was too confining, and he gave up labels. He was one of the first black men to graduate from Vassar. He went to St. Vladimir's Orthodox Seminary and earned a Doctor of Theology degree at the University of Bern in Switzerland. He taught for 10 years at Howard University, where he taught courses that included AIDS education. He then taught for 21 years at Star King School for the Ministry in Berkeley, California. He led students frequently on a pilgrimage to Turkey to learn about the Sufi poet Rumi in Rumi's own homeland. Ibrahim Farajaje embraced Sufism as his own spirituality, but also valued what he called organic multi-religiosity. His pedagogy was to try to avoid what he called academic oppression. He wanted learning to occur beyond the classroom and to include what each student brought to the experience. He was an AIDS activist, a filmmaker, a queer theologian, a father of two. His life was a living witness to intersectionality. He called himself a scholartivist, <laughs> scholar, artist, activist. He believed that we need radically progressive, inclusive, complex spiritual leaders, and he fit the bill. He died in 2016. Ibrahim Baba is gone, but his influence remains. The Queer God Squad blesses the memory of Ibrahim Farajaje, and if his spirit is aware of it, may it bless us. Well, obviously I'm a fan. Uh, it's gone, you know, eight years and I'm still, you know, sad about it. I wish he could come and speak at Sunshine Cathedral. And kind of in a way he does. You can see his footprints, I think, in a lot of how we do things. And certainly the values of Sunshine Cathedral or the arts, and theology and activism all come together where we teach in lots of different ways, uh, where we value all kinds of perspectives, uh, where we uh, value truth and search for truth in all kinds of sources. Uh, we're a very Ibrahim Farajaje kind of place, I think. Uh, he spoke at a conference way back when, before your time, uh, an MCC conference, and way back in the day, uh, 1996, uh, he was he was part of a faculty. We were we were in a uh, two week course summer course <laughs> at a large faculty where everyone did their base. And he was one of the oh he oh he's, he he set people free. He set people <laughs> free. Oh, uh, just being himself. He never spoke loud or harshly, uh, but he just like shared shared his life, shared his story, shared his perspective. Ooh, some people from Texas and Alabama and Oklahoma, they weren't ready for him. Mm -mm. Um, some MCC people weren't ready for him. Right? <laughs> and I'm just like, how do I get to be him when I grow up? <laughs> oh, my gosh. How do I get to be him? And so, yeah, he was just amazing. And um, his commitment to an appreciation for creativity, for radical ecumenism, uh, ecumenism and even interreligiosity. I love that. Uh, radical multi-religiosity. Uh, oh, that's us. That is so us. Mm. Uh, I, I don't know that it's, I, I don't know that we even do it to his degree. People think that we are just way out there. Somebody once said that Sunshine Cathedral was the last church on the left as you were leaving Christianity. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> Well, good, then we're doing our job, right? <laughs> but 
but I think we don't go as far as he did. But he he was just honestly, I think, one of my heroes. And I'm glad we get to remember him today. I remember when I was living uh, in D.C. Uh, when he was at Howard at the time. And the big controversy was he had just come out, I think, as bisexual, which was a big old thing for the community then. But also that he and his partner was having a, their first child. And that whole thing just kind of blew everybody's like, wait a minute. This and they weren't married, were they? No, but they weren't she married. was a woman. Like, they could have passed her straight. Yeah, but yeah. And it's like the whole, that, that whole little, you know, at this point, you know, that, that family blew that whole university <laughs> apart. It's like, because he was visible. He was out there. Uh, he was telling his truth. He was living his truth. And it's like, this is just who I am. This is part of my, th- this is my family. And my family is going to do this. And you think, I'm not going to take, I'm not going to take the health studies course or the nursing course or whatever about AIDS. I'm going to be safe and take a theology class. Oh, not, not if you took his class, because his classes include AIDS, AIDS information. And in one of the classes, to pass the class, you had to be certified as an AIDS peer counselor. Yep. So yeah, he he plucked the nerves. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm not going to learn anything about AIDS. I'm going to take theology. Uh, that's what you thought. Because Mr. Rian's going to make sure you know some stuff. His class was the one and only class that I ever heard of that was a wait list to get in. Because everybody wanted, I mean, after that first couple of semesters, everybody wanted to be around. Because it was so Uranus. different. And having worked with him uh, uh, in our 19th intensive, and then we brought him back later for another another session in a different program, under the Reverend program. I just remember just he walked into the room, and it's like almost nothing that changed. And this is many years apart. But that but present, instead of leather, he was wearing uh, his Sufi garb. Sufi garb. And this beard that he no longer trimmed. Or, yeah. And just, but it was just something about his mere presence. Like you knew when he walked into the room, there was this calm that fell over the room, except for those people who looked at him and they couldn't take his look. And there was a few of those folks in the room mm-hmm. and they couldn't get beyond that in order to appreciate what he had to offer. Now the Sufi and, beard, because Sufis do not, no, I'm, th- I'm thinking about Sikhs that don't cut their yeah. hair, but the Sufi look didn't appeal to me, but back in his leather days, I thought he was sexy. <laughs> I but did. Yeah, his, but just the people who was around, his energy, I mean, his, he was something, he was like, <laughs> almost like a reincarnation of Buddha. It was something about his energy, his presence, his and just brilliant. his wisdom and his brilliance that whatever you, whenever he was talking, you were just mesmerized. You're like, you were just hooked right into him, and every word that came out of his mouth, he's like, okay, I'm there, I'm there. And all he was doing was just really sharing his experience, his life, what theologies meant and didn't mean to him. Uh, he was clearly a pulse denomination. He was beyond all of it. And by the time he got to Star King, I think he just evolved even more. And to he he just evolved. It's like well, this. that's why he went to Turkey. It wasn't just a pilgrimage. I mean, it was right. kind of for him. But while he's in Turkey, he's like, we could we could sit back home and read and talk about you know the the, the Council of Ephesus or whatever. Or I can take you there and point to the building. Like, and that's where it happened. Right. And so he loved that. That was his pedagogy. Yeah. Like, let's don't just I'm just gonna tell you what ministry. I think about it he or what I think I know about it. Let's go experience it, and then you yeah. tell me what it was like for you. Way ahead of his time. Yeah. You said in the very beginning there, you wish that you could have him come and preach, mm-hmm. but you think that a lot of it is here anyways. I'm watching you too. <laughs> And I've known you for a lot of years now. <laughs> and I see the passion that you have for the style of work, his style mm. of teaching. What was the word? A skull, skull actor? Thank skull you, thank you. <laughs> but that's what you do. And that's what we do here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So he may not have been able to be here to preach, but his life and his work <laughs> is living, his influence is living yeah. on through the two of you. I can just see the passion. When you talk about him, your faces light up. Yeah. You smile. You have such a great appreciation for him. Yeah. Continue doing that. Yeah. You're honoring him that way. Yeah. You really are, whether you know it or not. He was uh, he was a scholar. He didn't write as much as most scholars just mm-hmm. because they expected him to. So he, I don't need to do that. But he he has a lot of interviews and speeches and on the Internet. It's, it's worth book. it to find it. Yeah. And here. And he wrote some. He contributed to, to like you, you do a chapter to this book or, or or edit that book or whatever. Yeah, he, he wrote some. But he wasn't one of these. You put a sub book every two or three years or or he's in every journal ever. Uh that just wasn't his style. Yeah. But if you can, if you can hear, in fact, if you go to Star King's website, they have, uh, I believe, Archive. his his uh, memorial service when he died, mm-hmm. and also an interview with him, mm-hmm. just talking about the Star King, you know, the, the ethos of this school or whatever, and, and his part in it. Uh, you, you'll get a taste of him mm-hmm. if you'll just watch those ten minutes. Yeah, and I hope you do. He's he, uh, if, if you appreciate Sunshine Cathedral, you know, every once in a while you hear something like Barbara Harris, John Spong. Uh, uh, Ibrahim Farajaje, uh, 
by seeing some of these people or reading some of these people or watching some of these people, you'll get a feel for where we've come from, mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the ancestors mm -hmm. that uh, yeah. continue to contribute to what we're doing now. Yes. Well, that's uh, today with the Queer God Squad. We want to thank you for joining us. We're here daily at 3 p.m. to have some fun and to discuss what our LGBTQ community is talking about. Sunshine Cathedral is the world's largest progressive queer church. Progressive, queer, and God are words that naturally should go together. And we're all in this together. Remember that. You are God's miracle, not God's mistake. Until next time, we are the Queer God Squad. Goodbye. <laughs>